Hey guys, so today we are going to discuss about an important data structure called as linker list. So what I'm trying to do is actually, you know, I thought of making up a playlist which contains all about linker list, you know, starting from the scratch, what is a linker list, what are the operations we are going to do in a linker list and what are the types of linker list and then later some example lead code questions from which are related to linker list like that. So I thought of making up it would be, you know, it would be like a course or it would be easier for some like a beginner to get into it, right? So that's all that's what I have thought. So let's start, let's get into it. So what is a linker list? What is a linker list? So a linker list is a, it is a data structure. First of all, it is a data structure. It is a linear data structure as well. So what is a linear data structure? Linear data structure is nothing but where the elements are showed or represented in a linear fashion. So one of the best example for another linear data, data structure is an array. So for example, in an array, how would you represent elements? So it would be like this, right? So you will be having an array like this and you will be having indices and the elements are stored in linear fashion. So this is what a linear fashion is. So they are, they are represented one after the other in a series. That's what a linear fashion or a linear data, data structure represents, right? So even though in even in linker list, that's how the elements are represented. And in linker list, the elements are stored in a non-contiguous memory allocation in memory location. So what it actually means? So in array, what happens is the elements are stored in the contiguous memory locations. That actually means, for example, we have some elements as we have seen before, like uh, one like one two three so for example let's say we are in some in some place in a memory so that memory place is represented or it, it's its location is like thousand maybe right so the next element in the array will be stored in the adjacent or in the contiguous uh, loca location which will maybe like thousand one and the other element will be stored in the contiguous memory location which will be which would be thousand two so this is this is how it happens in array Right, this is how it happens in array. But coming to linker list, we are not known where the next element will be stored. It, it is stored some, so it's some uh, like you know, uh, random places. Like for example, let's say, uh, uh, you know, uh, one is stored maybe at some place where its location is a thousand, and two is stored at some place where its location is like three thousand and. Uh, four three stored at some place with so with location maybe three thousand five hundred we don't know the location so that's that's how it happens in linker list that's why it is called as non contiguous memory locations this is very important so now the next thing so the elements in linker list are linked using pointers so what is a pointer so pointer is nothing but you know uh, it stores or uh, maybe I can say it's it's some kind of a variable where it stores the reference of some other variable or it shows the reference of a memory location so in general we have two types right one is a primitive data type one is a reference data type so primitive data type stores the values where reference data type stores the references where these values are stored so pointers actually means those references as references only so why are they represented using pointers or why are they linked using pointers as I said before, the elements are stored in a non-contiguous memory location, right? So for that, what we have to do is we have to store the next element or some the, the adjacent element location with with a reference variable. For that purpose, we are we are using these pointers. So you will get to know much later. So each element in the linker list is represented as a node. So what is a node? So node is nothing but it is an object. It's actually an object. For example, let's take we have created a class which looks like this its name is a node and we have we have put some attributes in it so the first one is a value which stores the value of the particular node and the second one is a reference reference data type or reference type which stores the address of the ad address of the adjacent node so for example the value is nothing but this one in here the reference or the next type is nothing but this is the this is it so this is going to store the address of the next next uh, node so as an address of the next node is 2000 right so this 2000 will be stored in this next variable so that if you want to go to the next element or the next node you can easily get right so if you know the address of the next node you can just go to that address that's how linker list is repeated. that's how we are using the pointers so this is a pointer right using this pointer or reference we are trying to go we are trying to go to the next node so that's how linker list uh, works for example this is a node right this is a node class so a node is nothing but it is an object it has an object and where these nodes are 
independent with each other because if you change the value of one object it doesn't affect the uh, value of some other object that actually object is in the, in the sense a node so normally let's take we have created an object or maybe we call it as a node let's take well, let's, let's say we have created a node so normally the the node creation or an object creation would looks like this right so i'm going to create an object which is of name n1 and this is of type node i'll pass the the value as it is so now i'll create some other node so it would looks like this maybe i'll name it as n2 and new node right so i'm going to pass two right so now i have created two nodes so maybe it looks like this it is the first node right this is the second node so now we have assigned the values so this is the one this is two but if you see they are not connected with each other right there are some independent nodes they are not connected with each other they are stored in non-contiguous memory location this is stored at some place maybe like uh thousand not one and this is stored at some place maybe like thousand not two they are not there this one this first node doesn't know where the second node is there right so now in order to connect them what we can do is we have to use this next variable this is a reference type right this stores the, the reference of the next next node so for that what i do is you can just say n1 dot next is equal to n2 so what happens is this n1 dot next which is this location is going to store n2 which actually means it's going to store 3002 so you can easily get get to go to the next node so if you store this this the, the reference of the next node in this next variable so it's automatically going to create us a link right this is what an actual representation this is how this is how it happens with the the value and with the next variable so let's get to uh, get, get to know what are types of linker list so there are different types of linker list so based on requirements based on some situations we are going to use we will be using some linker list different types of linker list so starting with the first one the first one is a single linker list so a single linker list is nothing but it is a default linker list or a normal linker list so as we have seen before so single linker list is nothing but it is a linker list where every node in a linker list is linked to the next node only so in this case let's see let's take this is an example so this is a node right as you have as you have seen before this is a node where it contains a value right it contains a value and the second one contains the reference of the next node so in this case it is 2000 right so now this node is connected to all to the right side node right this is how it is connected so that's why it has only a single link it doesn't have multiple links it has only a single link to the next node so if it's connected to the next node only then that's called as a single link list so this is what a single link list is so now let's go to the second one so the second one is a double link list so what is a double link list so a double link list is also one of the kind of a link list where every node is linked to the previous node and also the the, the next node as well so as you have seen in, in the single link list it is connected to the next node only right to the right side node only but in double link list what happens is this node for example let's say we are we are, we are at here so this node is connected to the right side node but by storing its reference which is 3000 it also connects to the left side node by storing its reference which is so that's why as it has double links two links right that's why it is called as double linker list so let's go to the next one uh, the next one is circular linker list so what is the circular linker list this is the last node right so its value is 40 so it's sto it's going to store the reference to the first node which is this node so that's how it makes a circular linker list that's how it makes a loop so this is a circular linker list and uh, you know now coming to you know what is a better one what it uh, what is a better linker list to use to be honest i would say it depends on the situation so for example let's take uh, you want to do some normal traversing like in to go to towards the right i mean you don't have to come back from a node so in that case you can either use a single singly or double link list because even a single linker list it is connected towards the right side node even a double linker list it's connected to the right side node so as you don't have to come back right so you can use a single link list in that case so coming to the double link list what is the advantage is it makes us an advantage of moving backwards so for example let's take we are in single link list we are at this node you can only go towards the right side right as you have the reference of the right side node but you don't have to you don't have the reference of the left side node so 
that case it would be difficult to go back of course you can use some recursion and recursion like that but in general using pointers you cannot go back right so coming to a linker list what you can do is uh, you have two pointers towards the left and right so using that you can you can take it as an advantage and you can go towards the left and you can go towards the right so this makes mo moving forward and backwards easier in double linker list so in, in circle link list whenever you want to go to the first node from the last node or it, it actually it actually very it is actually very useful at some situations i'll tell you later about that uh, i'll tell you in depth about circle link list la later in future videos but uh, whenever you want to go you want to make some things faster from the last node then in that case circle link list is very useful so yeah so this is briefly about link list like type what are, what is a link list and what is it what are the types of link list so in the videos i'm going to you know discuss about the operations we are going to do in the, in the link list uh, not just the theory as well but also the implementations of it what are the time complexities what makes a particular link list better when compared to some other and what are the scenarios we are going to use that so yeah this is the video if you like the video please make sure you like and subscribe thank you